first bring anyone in who needs to be, and then I'll can, I'll say the magic words. <laughs> and the recording has started. Uh, nope, we have an audience member, but it's it's not a committee member. All right. Uh, then I will call the meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee to order at 6.02 p.m. on Thursday, March 4th, 2021, uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's order suspending some uh, parts of the open meeting law. We are meeting remotely by Zoom. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the town's YouTube channel. Um, Will you rename Diana there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking for the That's okay. agenda. Yeah. So we might see Dave Williams, but that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the only one person we're, who might show up soon because Anna will be late. Okay. All right. Well, then let's proceed. Um, Robin very kindly volunteered to take minutes. Last time, do you remember that, Robin? Robin, oh dear. I'm here, I'm here. Oh. Yep, no, I did not remember that, but I'm ready. <laughs> <Sort> <laughs> she will oh, be. Well, we can see what you're doing, so That's right. whatever. You can, <laughs> you can always just watch the tape. Uh, All right. let me just, yeah, let me get, I, last time I did, I did this at work, there was no tape. <laughs> so actually, funny story, it ended up being much easier to uh, make the minutes for when you don't have the tape, and you just kind of have to summarize from the little chicken scratch that you have. <laughs> Sometimes taking minutes is a little. Well, it, too it much. keeps it. It keeps it shorter. That's yeah. for sure. Okay, so we okay. just. Uh, okay. All um, right, but I need to take roll call, and so you answer out loud, so we know we can all hear each other. All right, Sam McLeod. Here. Katie Allen Zobel. Here. Andrew McDougall. Present. Sarah Isinger. Present. Diana Stein. Here. Robin Fordham. Here. And Sarah Marshall, that's me. I am here. So we are missing Dave Williams and Anna Devlin Gothier at the moment. All right. So our first order of business is to review minutes. We have two sets, one from November 19th. Gosh, so, such a long time ago. Um, is everybody who's ready to? to speak about those? Uh, so I did receive email edits from Katie, Diana, and I think Sarah Isinger. So uh, I will incorporate those. I think I emailed comments a long time ago, like uh, yeah. back in January. So uh -huh. before our January meeting, so you might look. Yeah. All right, does anyone have anything? Oh, hello, Dave. Can you, good, renamed. We, good. All right, so we are uh, just turning to the draft minutes of November 19th, 2020. Does anyone have any sort of substantive comment uh, that we might need to discuss? Robin, you'll have to speak up if you do. Okay, I'm good. Yeah. All right, then uh, hearing none, I will move that we accept the minutes as amended with the small edits that people have emailed to Anthony. Is there a second? Sam McLeod seconds. All in favor, please raise your hands. Robin says aye. aye. Okay, aye. Robin says aye. So that is unanimous, um, eight votes. We have one, one member absent. All right, thank you. Next are the minutes of the, our previous meeting, our prior meeting of January 21st, 2021. Um, I think, I, I don't think I emailed any comments. Um, Andrew was late to the meeting. I believe I, I even looked back at the tape, 
I, I noticed because the uh, number of votes didn't match the number of people. So it looks like others also. So perhaps under members present, um, just note that Andrew McDougal was late. I think Sarah Isinger was also a little bit late, but I don't think you missed any of the votes. So maybe it doesn't, it's not material. Sam? I wasn't, I wasn't sure if that needed to be addressed or not. So I thought to indicate simply that Andrew was present because he was at a later point in time. Uh, if the standard protocol going, you know, is to reference the time of arrival, then that should be done. I wasn't certain, so I submitted it as is. Well, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know the time of arrival. I think, Anthony, if we just put in late after, you know, or arrived late or something, is that adequate? Okay. Um, sometimes. Muted. I am? No, no, Diana? Anthony was Yeah, muted. I was going to say, sometimes uh, people put in the time when someone arrives and then it's clear why the votes are different. And I did have a question about something in the minutes. Go ahead. That, um, and I just wanna find the line so you can explain it to me because it's something you said, Sarah. Um, Sarah Marshall added that these projects also pay a reduced tax rate and the town will benefit from that revenue stream. So I had trouble in my head figuring out why a reduced tax rate <laughs> was gonna be a benefit. So could yeah. you explain that to me or put Yes, it that because it will be affordable housing, not market rate housing, it's taxed at a lower rate. Right. So it's, it's, more, is it's more than now, I mean, we don't, we don't even have to put in reduced. I think we could just strike that word. Uh, if I think what, what's confusing me is why a reduced tax rate would benefit the town. It's really the housing that's going to benefit the town. And well, so the, house, the housing does, certainly. <laughs> yeah. but, but it also will generate more tax revenue than it does now because it'll okay. be Okay, but more... I think that would help to modify it by saying we will get new tax revenue than we're getting now or more tax revenue than we're getting now. The way that was linked, I found puzzling. Maybe no, no one else did. I, can you just point me to where in the minutes this is? Yeah. I was gonna say, this. I was gonna say, Diana's comment is actually about the November minutes. Oh. oh. I'm sorry, I thought we, okay, well. We just and, voted on those. <laughs> all right, wait a second. Um, is that correct? Let me just look here. Yeah, it's uh, it's the November minutes, uh, section, okay. the, end, the end of section five. All right. Well, then I, I uh, even though I think the minutes basically are fine, I still think it would be helpful to include that. Okay. Well, since we passed well, a ship, can we make a note of it now in today's minutes? Or is so, that so the line the line reads. Sarah Marshall added that these projects also pay a reduced tax rate and the town will benefit from that revenue stream. There, one doesn't follow from the other. Right, they, that they was be, my they problem. Could be, they could be two separate sentences, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah. I could just... yeah. Okay. compared so to okay. now, where we'll there's that... no revenue from that property. Yeah. All right, is everyone right. okay letting Andrew just make yeah. that little change. All right, so now with the January minutes, uh, it was also um, a point, um, Robin, yeah, yeah. Robin talked about notifying the people, people about um, uh, saying that there is a CPA exemption. And I think it would be good to include in the minutes, what that exemption is. Can we attach, there was, can we attach uh, the document that um, Robin had distributed to us in which we spoke about, spoke to? I mean, it's the assessors. It's, <laughs> I, mean, the, I, mean, I mean, I don't think you actually went into too much detail about it in the meeting, so I think a reference or a link. Yeah, I, I mean, there's probably a lot of detail that 
I don't know, I don't want to misrep misrepresent what the abatement is. So we point people to the assessor's office and they can find out what the. Yeah, I'd agree with that. What the criteria too. Yeah. It, didn't it have yet to be created? That the assessor was going to create something. Yeah, we've done we've done all, all that we need to do, um, and and I think the motion is correct. We had viewed this language, and that's that's what you know. Okay, I just found it um, mystifying to an outside reader talking about this tax exemption. Um, I mean. Robin, I know, mentioned in the meeting that she would qualify because of her income or something like that. I, I don't know. I think that, I, it's, just, I think that it's, it's, I mean, it is the, the purpose of the, of the meeting was to direct people to the assessor's office or have the, and have the assessor's office change their webpage. It wasn't to um, explain what the exemption is and it changes every year. I mean, it's not something that's static. So there's no point in, in, in you know, and it depends on how many people in your household. I think, it, you know, just to, and, and I mean, the minutes are what we talked about. They're not really a directive to where to go. So I don't sense any groundswell for altering that, <laughs> desire to alter that language okay okay all right but always appreciate a close reading um anybody else have comment all right i had one i just have to now interpret my own writing this is in section five cpac fall schedule planning um oh i think it's uh i would propose adding a sentence or a clause to um, the, the short paragraph ending addition a uh, week on October 8th, 2021. Um, and that is, um, but publicize, and then add, but, pu or and, publicize the proposal window ahead of time. Because, because we want people to know several months in advance when the proposal period will open so they have time to develop their proposal and vet it through the proper channels and not and and not be surprised <laughs> like oh now it's happening okay is everybody all right with that sure okay yes anything what's else the, what's the phraseology again can you confirm it the edit and pub and publicize the proposal window ahead of time. Done. All right. Okay, then uh, I would move that we accept these minutes as amended. Is there a second? I can second it. Diana, thank you. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. Robin, speak up. Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. It's unanimous. Eight in favor. Okay. I'm, I'm abstain. Sorry, sir. I, I, since I missed like half of that meeting, I was going to abstain. Okay. So that'll be seven in favor. One Thanks. abstention. Okay. And one absence. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. How great to be caught up. <laughs> caught up with that. All right, so we now have, um, if any members of the public are in the audience and want to say something, this is the, that moment. Nick Gage. <clears throat> and your mandolin, or maybe it's a ukulele, <laughs> a ukulele. Oh, what? Oh dear. I don't see anything, so. We see your photo, but we hear you. Okay, good. Sorry about um, uh, this. My, my name is Meg Gage. I live in North Amherst, and I appreciate all the hard work you're doing. And I'm here just to listen, uh, particularly uh, Sarah. Let me know that the history trail is on the agenda, 
and where uh, Jane Wald, also the historical commission, also um, let me know about a meeting they have next week uh, when the, when our project is on the agenda. And uh, she invited me to make a presentation, but we're trying to just modestly listen and make sure we understand uh, what the status of the project is. In particular, um, first of all, I really appreciate everybody's um, efforts to make the process work better. And it's a whole new timing and everything, which I fully understand. And I know how hard this kind of thing can be. Um, we're, if there's any way we can apply uh, consistent with the criteria, that's what we'd like to do. And we did start with the historical commission last, the last, and they were enthusiastic, I think, but I think we were naive about um, the specifics of the criteria. So we're paying super attention now and in touch with some people at the state level. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But um, on the other hand, it's a pretty cool project that we think will enhance uh, North Amherst uh, an appreciation of uh, some history that we're really concerned not to lose. So thank you. Sorry about the picture. I can't make my camera work. <laughs> Robin, <laughs> there seem to be Zoom gremlins today. Thank you, May. The, the picture I have I'm on crutches was when I was uh, recovering from hip replacement. I took up the ukulele. You could see. It's oh, I didn't even. I didn't even notice. Well, that's cool. That's a good <laughs> use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forced immobility. Yep. Um, I have to say, I'm sorry there was a yeah, miscommunication. This your project is not on our agenda. Oh, um, I think for, initially the meeting was posted with an old agenda, and then it oh. was corrected. So, but we there will be discussion that you may be interested in, but it's not going to be specifically about. Oh, okay. Well, I I don't know if I'm still on audio. I've read the old agenda that's what i was responding uh, to. but we are talking about um we are discussing uh allowability around historic preservation projects so well that's great i mean I, the, the frustrating thing i think for everybody was we didn't know exactly why we didn't qualify or why we what it would have taken you know we just wanted to know do we qualify <laughs> and if you know or not right right okay thank, thank you, you. Bye. You're, thank you Okay, You're Sam, can you mute picture. yourself if that's banging in, in the background? I'm not making Somebody's, any noise. Okay, pots and pans crash. I'm here, I'm here alone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, maybe it was at, at next. All right. Uh, no one out. No one else from the public wishing to speak. No. All right. I do not see any other hands. Okay. All right. Then I want you to give a couple updates. Um, as you know, in early, early February, I presented our fiscal year 2022 recommendations to town council. Anthony and Holly and Sonia were all there. Um, I think that was well, well received and then turfed to the finance committee, which, which, uh, which always does and always will. Um, vet uh, CPA recommendations, CPAC recommendations from their point of view. And that meeting just happened this past Tuesday, Tuesday, Monday, just this week, a couple of days ago. Uh, Anthony was there again to help, <laughs> to help me and Sonia. Um, and there was, uh, there was a, a good discussion, but, um, and I'll get to some of the kind of things that are on their mind for that we can address going forward. All right, but they did, the, the finance committee did uh, vote unanimously to re recommend the whole package other than the, lot, the special collections thing, which is totally separate and council is not yet ready to um, think about that project. So all the, all the cash kind of cash awards, um, that whole set has been recommended back to town council. I don't know when they will vote on it, but. Uh, it's yeah. next It's next on their agenda for March 22nd. Okay. Wait, so the agenda, the finance or city council? I'm sorry? Council. Um, council, okay. Council. Yeah, the, the last step now is for town council to vote and they can vote them as a package or they can vote down, up or down you know, as they like. And as we know, 
they can decrease awards, they cannot increase awards or obviously make any new, <laughs> any new awards. Anthony, what was the date again? March 22nd. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, I also wanted to tell, just to let you know, because you will be interested, I think that the Belchertown Road purchase for affordable housing, uh, that, that it was bought just a couple of weeks ago, I think it's all, it's all done. The town owns it, the affordable, the municipal affordable housing trust hopes to issue an RFP that um, uh, at the end of April or by the end of April um, that will ask for affordable housing, proposals for affordable housing projects at both the Belchertown Road site that is purchased with C CPA funds and the East Street school site that we have heard about in the past that was surplus um, town property, which is now being made available for such a purpose. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, it's great. We were able, we were able and they were able to move in council <laughs> to move fast and uh, make that happen, okay? Lastly, I wanted to let you know that Sam and I had a meeting last week, I guess, an informal meeting with some of the members, so not a quorum of any committee, some of the members of the Participatory Budgeting Commission, which is something that the charter um, said will exist. I don't remember if it's a kind of a limited term thing, but, but their task is to um, decide what that would mean for Amherst to have a for the public to be able to participate in the budgeting. So they are talking to any, any kind of group or part of the town that um, has, has money. So they had some questions about CPA and our work. And uh, so we had a, like an hour, just an hour long discussion with them. So we'll see, they, they shared their draft notes. I assume at some point, um, well, I, I shouldn't assume. Um, I, I, I could certainly share those with you if you want to see, but I, I expect that in the next couple of weeks, we'll get their final, the final version of their notes of our meeting, which they will then present to the rest of their own uh, committee. So if you'd like to see them, I'm sure I can make those available. All right, any questions about those items? All right, then I'd like to turn to the schedule for fiscal year 23. I think Anthony hopefully has a new. So as I was saying in the pre-meeting, oh, no. uh, I, <laughs> I, have, I have been locked out of my office computer this evening. Um, hmm. And that is not a document I thought to email to myself before sure. the meeting started. So perhaps I should just send it to the committee <clears throat> by email tomorrow and I'm not a member, so if there's feedback, you can send it to me. And does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, gosh, I was hoping, I don't know, do we have to, do we have to vote on it? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, up and I mean, up until now, Sonia's just set the schedule. <laughs> she said, here's your and, schedule. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. this is more collaborative than it, than it usually is. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so if I can just send that to everyone okay. in the morning. Uh, as I was saying before the meeting started, this has been happening all week and I'm not sure why, but I cannot access my files right now. Well, that sure makes working from home hard. <laughs> and I seem to have an unstable um, connection. So if I disappear, it's not me. <laughs> so just thought I'd say that ahead of time. Right. Like I said, Zoom is, I don't know, collapsing or something. All right. Um, okay, so there is a schedule. We just don't really know exactly what it is right now, but um, yeah. <laughs> that's good because then that's something we can, we can share it with other people. We can start sharing it if that's yeah. helpful. Okay. Um, that just, that reminds me, I don't know, know why, so. I guess throw this into back into chairs updates. I know that several of us have 
appointments to CPAC that expire at the end of June. I'm one of those, but it's quite possible I will be reappointed. So um, if you are, will be still on your sending committee, unless you're an at-large member, it, you know, you should, I hope you'll be in touch with your committee or board um, to get reappointed, or if you don't want to be reappointed, get someone else reappointed or get appointed. Um, because I don't think we'll really meet in the summer. I hope not. I, frankly, I'm hoping that maybe we'll meet in April and then we'll be done. Um, which means, uh, you know, any new people coming on board, they might have, we might have one quick meeting and August, right, or something before the proposal window opens. So um, be good to make sure that the committee is fully, fully seated, so to speak. Okay. All right. So next is continued discussion of evaluation frameworks. We looked at Robin's and we looked at Andy's spreadsheet. Um, I, I don't think we had time to say everything that we might say about those, but I do want to throw out there now, um, what are we looking for? You know, we, <laughs> are we, do we want to make something formal that we expect future committees will use? Are we just sharing options for uh, methodical ways each of us could evaluate proposals in the future? Do we just want to make sure that our CPA plan and any description of the application process um, ad adequately conveys what's expected? I mean, we can't, I put it back on the agenda, but I, um, I want to clarify what it is we want to do with these. Anybody? Um, Sarah Isinger. Oh, she was first, then Katie. Katie, do you want to go first or? Okay. Um, so I think of this in a couple different ways and it's very similar to what you just discussed, but I think it's helpful to give the applicants a sense of what they, how they will be evaluated. Like what are the core areas? And then we have a rubric that mirrors those um, evaluate those points of evaluation. My vote would be to do it simpler rather than a very complex spreadsheet. Um, and I think kind of similar to what Robin has done, um, I think we could rate things. It could be, um, we could then have averages. I, I think what it does, and we could submit them. I'd be happy to do that. I think similar to the straw poll exercise, it um, it gives a little bit more transparency to our process. We have um, some standardization and consistency across what we are all evaluating. So I think it's helpful for both the applicants and us, but my vote would be to be simple and it's non-binding, you know, it just ends up being a way for us to organize the conversation and see where we've landed on our, um, on our evaluations. And it, I think it helps um, uh, weight our conversation and guides our, our agendas. So that so you, so you would, um, it would so your recommendation that whatever, whatever the simple framework is, we all use it. Yeah, that we yeah. would use just yeah. a rating sheet and submit right. them before the one meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the one piece uh, that I would add, and it's, if this isn't the right time to talk about it, it's fine, is I would love for us to weight projects slightly differently. Like sometimes I feel like we've sometimes had lengthy conversations with very, for like the, the amount of time that we talk about projects to me should be a slightly representative of how much they've requested. Um, we've tended to be go down very long conversations about projects that are smaller in nature and and then not really give enough time or give even the same amount of time to the very large uh, requests. And I think it'd be great if there could be some leveling of that. Like, 
I don't know how we do that in a rubric, but I don't think all of our applications um, should be treated, get the same floor time because I think the resources are really different and we have limited. So I want to figure out some way to do that, but that's maybe a, a different point. So I'll, I'll stop talking and let others. Okay. Jump. I would say that to the issue of time, I would think that's just a matter for the agenda that we say, yeah, I don't know, you know, we'll, <laughs> if it's under 10,000, we'll spend no more than 10 minutes on it. You know, if it's, if it's up to I don't know if others agree with that, but that's right. Oh, okay. But so. I, but I, all I mean is what I, if, if we were going to go that right. way, it doesn't have to be a, somehow in like something that everybody, because we all know what the, the request, what the amount of the request is. So we could just build the timing into the agenda. Katie, did you want to? Yeah. I, I love that I let Sarah go first because she said all of my points. So I could just say ditto. Um, but I do want to just underscore. I think transparency is really important for applicants, especially those who aren't used to doing this kind of thing, just to sort of know what we're aiming for. And consistency among sort of the inter-rater reliability, you know, sort of in, in all of us. But the thing that I really want to make sure is that it is not a decision making tool, it's a prioritization right. tool. It helps just helps kind of prioritize so that we can make this you know, have discussion and make decisions about those things that are um, where we might have differences of opinions, you know, it identifies where there's really big gaps or um, it, sometimes it identifies ones that we're all in line so we don't have to have as long a conversation. So that, I just wanted to um, build on what Sarah was saying. Yeah. Diana, I think you, uh, your hand up, is that right? Okay, that um, I think Robin's kind of checklist would be an easy one for um, people who have never done this before to see, who have applied before, to see the kinds of thinking we have. We're not going to affix point values to to it, they're just simply guiding questions, or at least in my opinion, um, I, I, that's the way I would see it. And I can tell you the instability in my connection is due to the wind. Uh, we have- Oh, really? That, huh. Yeah. It might I'm help, Diana. Excuse me, if you turn off your video, sometimes that helps. We can hear you. I okay. Mean, I can hear you pretty well. <laughs> Sure. Um, I wanted to ask Anthony, can you, do you have Robin's chart? That was among the things, is that something you could put on your screen? And you're muted, so. Yeah, that was, that was emailed way back for the last meeting, right? Uh, I, 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 and I think I re -emailed You re-emailed it. it on Tuesday. Just oh, to oh, oh, then, okay, yes. Then, then, then I, I think it's called evaluation criteria. Mm -hmm. I have it if you if you want me to give it to you Anthony well while he's looking does anyone else yeah Sam uh, um, yeah I've got it so I, I see two things I see one is a delineation of the uh, evaluation criteria which is derived from the plan and then separate from that is a discussion as to how we as a committee would choose to vote. Uh, I'm of the opinion that it's desirable for any applicants to be directed to a central location, specifically the plan. Uh, maybe there can be some individual criteria listings based on categories such as historic, but the criteria is listed in the plan. It's, I think it would be beneficial to highlight what that is. From a voting standpoint, uh, I think that what we've done to date in terms of a single numeric rating for each project from the individual uh, members is desirable, but that uh, the criteria or spreadsheet or another listing similar to what Andrew generated uh, is something that would be worthwhile for the committee members to look at when they are arriving at a single number, whether it be one to five or whether we choose to go one to 10. Uh, so I'm of the mindset that the uh, uh, spreadsheet or the items listed on that spreadsheet are uh, a worthwhile 
it could be a printed document or otherwise for internal member decision making. But I think the criteria, the categorization of a one through five that we've used the last two years has worked well from my perspective uh, in terms of identifying which ones are going to be the easiest and which ones are not. Uh, and for for applicants, I think the website, web page, and or plan is desirable. One other comment uh, regarding Sarah's reference to Sarah E's reference to evening the time frame based on dollar amount. Uh, I'm of the mindset that every unless we're overwhelmed with applications, that every application is significant regardless of dollar amount to the applicant. Uh, that you know the Goodwin Church may ask for I forget was it twenty dollar twenty thousand eighteen, but for them it's of extreme importance. Similarly to the Jones, which was a million dollar application, to them it's of extreme importance. Uh, I say that in the context of indicating I'm an advocate for thoroughly discussing every item and if we needed to add more time and more meetings in the calendar down the road, I'd be in favor of it to make sure we don't shortchange any conversation on uh, very important discussions for the applicants. I, I would say, thank you, Sam. I would say to one of your earlier points, um, I wanted to take this up before we turn to the plan because we get to revise the plan. And if we think these are the criteria um, we would like to use, if this is a, you know adequate, if this is complete, then we can put this into the plan. <laughs> um, I agree. So we don't, we don't, you know, we, should, we're, we shouldn't be driven by what's in the plan. It's ours to revise and we need to revise it. So, mm -hmm. and this is one, one of the aspects of that plan. So if we can just, we, we, need, to, we need the plan to reflect the thinking about, of this committee about how we're going to assess proposals. And, and, oh, I see Robin has her hand up. <laughs> Um, I've lost my thread, so you go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, Diana? Yeah. Okay. So can you hear me? I'm yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think this sort of uh, valuation um, or criteria to look at could be put in the plan. And the reason I like the idea of doing that is Oh, we lost you. Oh dear. Robin, your hand is up still. Have you? I haven't. I'm typing furiously. Um, and I could <laughs> not say where it came down. from. Oh, hold on. Diana's back. Or, uh... Diana, your audio's cutting in and out. We don't. I wonder if she called in, if it would be better. And you want to try that, then it would definitely be audio only, but okay. Um, oh, she, you're back, Diana. Well, you were saying you like the idea of including this in the plan, right? Because I think that it gives aspects that the individual proposer might not think about, like getting multiple bids for um, instead of just presenting us $10,000 without any understanding of where that figure came from. So um, I, that's why I think this is good and could very easily be put in the plan. I actually have one question about um, one of the elements here and that is urgency. Uh, the text says, Robin's text says, must the project be completed this year? Um, I, I mean, many projects are never completed in a year. I wonder if it's better to say, must the project be begun this year? You know, is it is it urgent to get started? Not, yeah. is it urgent to finish it? Some well, projects you take- could, You could leave it more open-ended open, open -ended with, you know, what is the urgency of the project? I just wanted to give weight to, you know, if somebody, so, you know, because I come from the historic preservation side, if somebody has a leaking roof, that gets more weight than someone who's, you know, 
roof replacement can wait three years. Yeah. That's all I wanted that. Um, and maybe it could say, does the project address an urgent need? Yeah, that's good, yep. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. Sarah, mm -hmm. this is Katie. I, um, yeah. I just wanted to um, respond to Sam's point earlier about the rating that you, you've been using that we use that I was able to participate in this year, the one to five. And I, I think that speaks to the simplicity idea, you know, and I think it, it, what I was interested in is how do we, how do each of us come up with that rating? <laughs> you know, and this, I think helps us figure out, is it a three, is it a four, is it a five, in a way that we understand where Sam is coming from, or Diane, or, you know, we, each committee member, because we're all sort of looking at the same things to get to that rating. So that's what I was thinking, um, Sam, in terms of how this would be helpful to inform or create that rating in a more consistent way, or more one that's more understood and less, um, uh, more transparent in terms of its subjectivity. Andrew. Thanks. Um, I, I agree with, I think Sarah's first comments about, um, I think it does make sense to, to spend more time on the larger projects, but I would, I would just say that, um, a lot of time the discussion is just around whether like the, I guess the, the quality of the application. So, you know, that extra time may be because it wasn't prepared well, and we just have a lot of clarification. Um, I think something like, like the document we have up now <clears throat> is, it seems like it's a use, useful like checklist for applicants to go through before they submit. And it might also be a useful framework for us to guide our discussions. Uh, I like the way that the, the, the questions are phrased. I think they're very open and some of them may be open-ended as well, right? And it, we may not necessarily know the answer to that. So I would be reluctant to use this as a, a framework for scoring per se, but I do think that there's lots of really useful applications for this. Um, I would say like in terms of the, the overall rating and you know, I know the, the, the form I submitted look, it looked complicated um, that like all of the language there was directly from the town's from, from the goals, like from the CPAC document. I didn't put anything new in there. So like when it when it's measuring the goals for, you know, like open space, I'm, I'm again, pulling the language directly from the document. So there's like, there's no Andrew interpretation into that. It's, is it achieving what the goals are intended? And then um, also the, the way I'd set that up is I actually don't put any numbers in, right? Like I think the, the notion of like giving it a number um, I think that that can sometimes be, uh, there may be like a false sense of precision. There may just be some bias that's introduced. So I'd set mine up to, to provide like qualitative assessments. Did it accomplish this, you know, likely, unlikely, certain possible like used language that's kind of descriptive that um, I would apply to those goals and then it would generate a number. And then also like the purpose of that number, I think is, as many have stated, is not to to, 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 to say one is necessarily better than the other or, or uh, like five is the best. It's really to help um, rephrase. It's really to help sort of understand how they relate to each other uh, and allows you to kind of compare projects within their particular need. Um, I think the most important thing if you're doing scoring is just that you, know, you, you account for what we're supposed to be measuring and you do it consistently. So like one through five, may work for some folks. Some people may want to do one through 10 or one through 100. Like as long as we're doing it consistently, that, that framework would allow us to say, this one is scores higher than the one below it than the one below that. So um, yeah, just my thoughts. Thanks. Dan. Uh, so I see value in both uh, the document that's on the screen and in Andy's, or Andrew's, excuse me, delineation of the quote unquote goals or purpose. Uh, and I see a distinction between both. Uh, the, what's on the screen is very close or if not consistent with the criteria 
on an application. I'm looking at one of our applications from last year, happens to be the town steps, and it lists the criteria one through nine. And it's feasibility, document of estimated costs, funding available, multiple sources, urgency, et cetera. So what's on the screen here is a nice way if I were an applicant, or even if I were just going through a checklist as a committee member to say, yeah, okay, uh, particularly as an applicant, have I done this? Yes, no, yes, no. Uh, it kind of guides them. It's essentially um, part of the existing application at present, right under the criteria section, but it's a nice visual way of focusing on it. Uh, and regarding uh, Andrew's comment of the goals and the listings, um, again, I think that the delineation in some easily located form, whether it be a, just a PDF saying, here are the listed uh, you know, purposes for each qualifying criteria. Basically, it indicates, does it qualify? Uh, is something good to have readily, readily available to look at when considering a project. Uh, that's what I've done each of the last few rounds. I've basically looked at each project in line with uh, Andrew's uh, uh, delineation. Uh, and during the discussion, we also talked about what's got Robbins here. So uh, I see them both as worthwhile job aids. Uh, I still believe that the committee members will benefit by uh, taking the, the information, digesting it, and coming up with a simple rating for the purpose of prioritizing our discussions. So I see value in both. <laughs> I want to note that Anna's here. Welcome. Um, oh, sorry, I was late. That's, that's fine. Glad you could join us. Um, so I, I would say this. One, we need to get the plan done. <laughs> Two, we can always and, and I will want the plan to say this many, in many places, something like, for the latest details of our process, please see the website. You know, so I, I, I want, so maybe we're talking about two different things. We need what's in the plan to be at least, I don't know, not leaving out something important, <laughs> right? And then perhaps, I mean, again, it may be, it'll be a new committee, probably some new people who are going to be evaluating the next round. Maybe at one of the early meetings, it's, well, here are some tools, which would folks like to use? I mean, as, as long as the, the, the rubric that we use does not somehow um, judge proposals on things they knew nothing about, it's, it seems to me it would be fair. It would be a, a fair tool, right? So, so maybe we can set, maybe we don't have to have, because the plan, remember, the plan is a document that's only going to be updated. I mean, it seems to take forever updated every few years. So we, it, has, it has to allow the committee some room for modifying its process, right? So would people be okay with making sure that the plan replicates this list that we see? And, and um, Anthony, could you just scroll to the top? Just, I mean, I don't see the whole document. Oh, okay. And then to the bottom, just in case. All right. So I would propose that we make sure the plan has basically a chart like this. All right. All right. And and again, we get, and maybe it's on the website, but there'll be language in the plan that says, for the latest information, blah blah blah, go to the website. And then. Well, I think. I think the website should refer um, people to the plan. Yes, and but I mean, for what the what this this year's proposal, you know, what the proposal form looks like, or the proposal instructions for this year, like you know, 
you can submit it between September 1st and whenever, I September see. 30th of 2021. And here's the link to the form and, you know, like that. So any, uh, Andrew, yes? Yeah, thanks. And I, uh, I may, and apologies if I missed this before, but so the, on the website, the community preservation plan final December, 2017, are we talking about revising the language in that? Yes, that's yeah. what, yes. Yeah. Yes, I okay. sent out, yeah, because the committee a year ago had been working on a revision for months and then COVID happened and then the committee turned over and we didn't ever finish. So I'm trying, to, I'm really hoping we could just finish it. And, but, but the end of the document in particular, two pieces, kind of the criteria and um, kind of the instructions for applicants, those were the things that didn't quite get resolved. So that's, so I'm, so my focus right now is, and, and, and I know people raised the, the concern about how are we going to evaluate in a transparent way? And, and that's, fine and but maybe it, that doesn't get completely nailed down tonight as far as the plan is concerned um, so is it acceptable to I've heard somebody maybe that it. was Robin Robin yeah um yeah no I was gonna say I mean I think it's a great idea to include it in the plan I'm a little biased but um <laughs> I, but I also wanted to say that I mean I created it because when I came on this committee i I really didn't have any sense of the kind of questions I was supposed to be asking. Mm -hmm. And um, over time between this and my job, I got more of a sense of how grants are evaluated. And so I think this, you know, all of these things are kind of a useful step forward and they can always be revised in the future. But yeah, I would be in favor of both using it as a guiding tool and including it in the plan so that applicants understand what criteria they are going to be evaluated on. So, um, Andrew, so yours, your spreadsheet, which again was a thing, a thing of beauty. Um, <laughs> um, you said it takes all the language out of the plan and, and applicants will have been directed to consult the plan. So it would not seem to me to be, um, again, tricking anybody if this is in the plan and then we do something even more fleshed out along the lines of your spreadsheet when it comes time for evaluating, is that? Yeah, I, I didn't, I, I thought that the evaluation criteria were, were pretty good in the existing document. Uh, and I thought also like what the proposal should include was also pretty clear. Uh, you know, obviously I didn't fill an application so I couldn't say how hard that was to, to complete, but. I, I, I don't know if I like, would say that there's a compelling need to change the criteria. And that's what I, I guess I'm trying to discern from this conversation now. Mm -hmm. So we feel like the, the, uh, the criteria that, were, that are already in the plan are not appropriate. I think we wanted to, I wanted to revisit that in light of the concerns that had been raised in this, uh, in this committee. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, know, I, I, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was, I'll, I'll just real quick. Okay. I, again, I, I, th I thought that they were pretty clear. They were very useful for me um, to use mm -hmm. uh, that in conjunction okay. with what the overall goals were for the, for the four components. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would, I mean, if we can make it more transparent, great. Um, but I, I don't feel compelled to like modify it. Yeah. Um, okay. Sarah. Yeah. Yes, Katie. I, I wonder if this, it might be helpful when I look at page 14, 15 of the plan, um, there's proposal requirements listed and then there's evaluation criteria separated out. And so some things like urgency is in the requirements, but it's not saying that you're getting evaluated or you know, prioritized based on that. So I'm just wondering if maybe there's some, a way to um, clarify there. Um, that might help 
to Andrew's point, you know, this this to me seems like great evaluation criteria, but there are some other things that we talked about um, and that each of us might be looking at, you know, like say urgency or feasibility um, that isn't in that criteria in the evaluation section. Well, I wondered about this proposal requirements. Um, again, this is to me part of the problem of having a document versus a process that can change every year <laughs> and it right. happens on the website. I wonder if um, if this, so on begins on page 14 proposal requirements um, can, can basically list what was in our last form but say um, that, you know, that the application is submitted on the website, you know, through the website and um, that form and requirements may change year to year. So go, go to the mm. website, <laughs> you know, to see exactly what they might be. That seems reasonable to say the application for the year in which you're applying will include the requirements because that's what we ask people to complete right. and will on the application it's really helpful to say and this is how you'll be evaluated and so you could include that as well there and update it as opposed to updating this piece but you could update the application each year um sarah, okay, we can. Um, yes sarah this is sean okay. sorry hey, sean. Um, i just joined on um so we're having a little bit of an issue and anthony will probably know what i'm talking about we have a, a JCPC meeting scheduled at seven. Oh, is that why? Is that was that that call? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, you oh. got to take Anthony away. <laughs> well, no, I don't have to take Anthony away. But, um, and I'm, I'm looking to Anthony to see if he has any recommendations. We can only have one Zoom meeting going at a time with the <laughs> accounting account, um, and uh -oh. so so we can't start the JCPC meeting without <laughs> um, ending your meeting. And I want to be respectful of your meeting too. So. Um, so I'm looking at Anthony to see if he has any suggestions as to what we could do for if there's another account that we have access to. Uh, and no, they took my account away. <laughs> not me, I'm not they. So <laughs> uh, I, IT, they they consolidated us down to one account. Oh no, really? And I, and oh. I, yeah. And um, I scheduled and I scheduled this like three weeks ago. All right, let me. Um, uh, I will try to figure out if we can get another um, Zoom set up. Um, if you yeah. have any suggestions, Anthony, give me a ring. And Anthony okay. can't use one of our own Zoom accounts because that's not a public, it would have to be public, right? And it has to, well, I don't know, recording and all. Yeah. Although, yeah. yeah, it would have to be announced two days before the meeting too. Could we, can I take a quick poll? Could we reconvene next Thursday? People able to do that? I got to look at my own calendar, but I'm pretty sure I could do that. I can do it. How many people think they could meet? You know, or, or could we split the difference time frame wise? Instead of ending at eight, expedite here, and then Sean's group start a little. No, well, no, that's a bigger group. No, that's yeah. My only they got a lot more money than we do. <laughs> My only issue is um, we have some departments that are coming to present tonight. Yeah. So if yeah. that, you know, I, again, I feel really bad about this. Um, if there is a way that you could reschedule the rest of the meeting, that would be really helpful. I'll, I'll write you all a very personal thank you note. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I would be really happy to, um, to have this meeting end early because the wind is meaning I'm missing about a quarter of the conversation anyway. So, um, so, Sarah, did it look like most of us could do, just because I know he said they were starting at seven. Well, so I, I didn't just, see everyone's but, hands. Please raise one, two, three. What are we raising our hands you, for? Can you meet next, next Thursday? At six. And I'm a yes, Robin. I, I'm an unknown. Actually, probably. actually, let me go get my camera. I, I don't want to prop. I'll be right back. Uh, if it's the 11th, I can't. It is, it is the 11th. That's correct. Yeah. Could we do it the following one? The wait till Sarah gets her calendar. Yeah. Can we just also just do this via email? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Again. <laughs> yeah, why don't we do a a, a doodle? Yeah. I I have we do another. You need to get off. I think. So. Yeah, we have. To, all right. 
right. It is I, what it again, is. Again, I thank you all so much. I really apologize. Five for notes. The, the Make IT get another account. That's crazy. You have so many meetings. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Night. <laughs>